As the death toll grows from Hurricane Barrel, emotions are still running high as to how Houston prepared. I don't have any Atta boys today or Atta girls today. More than two weeks ago, City Council Member Tiffany Thomas says her district needed more assistance after the storm hit. I had seniors charging life alerts in their cars, ventilators in their cars, and there was no support. Emergency leaders met with council today to lay out what they did before the storm. They say at the end of June, it became on their radar. But a week before it made landfall, they held their first call with state emergency leaders. The next day, they had discussions with the Coast Guard, police, and public works. Three days before the storm, they staged equipment. The day before, they fully activated the emergency operations center. A plan they say saved lives. Because of that, HFD was able to respond in the middle of the storm to 3,003 calls. It didn't all go well. When the power went out, a few community centers had generators. I'm going to make generators probably one of the highest priorities. It wasn't just power that went out, but cell phone towers to improve communication. They want to utilize churches and volunteers to spread information in person. Changes they can make now. As for long-term goals like providing ice, it may take more time. After Hurricane Barrel, the city trucked in $200,000 worth of ice from Kentucky. Emergency leaders say that's something they can't do before a storm arrives. How do we know that that area is not going to be impacted? How do we know that debris or trees aren't going to fall in that trailer? Who's going to man those trailers? Security issues. To fix this, they want a warehouse where ice can be created and stored. No timeline was given on how that could happen or how the city plans to pay for it. Improvements, though, city leaders say need to happen in case millions lose power again. Uh, there's been a lot of neglect. We know that. We have a great city, great people, but we have challenges that uh, we've got to address. Not big parts of Houston are still not looking so hot after two powerful storms. Yeah, neighborhoods are littered with debris, and with tomorrow's ABC 13 Weather Alert Day, people are worried that those piles will lead to clogged ditches and drains. ABC 13's Pujolodia is live with a look at the situation in Independence Heights. You know, so many of the homes here are still damaged from Hurricane Barrel. But the bigger concern for so many of these homeowners is right here. Piles and piles of storm debris. Just look at how high this pile is. And this is what we are seeing all over Southeast Texas. The whole owning have been down by the, the tree. You can see the debris out there. Pierre Puget is working as quickly as he can. Overwhelmed. Honestly overwhelmed. Uh, a lot of uh, pickup should be done uh, as soon as possible for us to be able to go farther with the work we have to do. Since barrel hit, Houston crews have picked up about 150,000 tons of storm debris. That's enough to fill up about half the Astrodome. But even with extra crews in place, cleaning up is a slow process. Areas like West Houston and places southeast of Houston, like Pearland and Friendswood, haven't been serviced at all yet. They haven't come about, so I don't know how long that's going to take. They're taking two, three months to pick this up. Most of this is from the first storm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's bad out here. <laughs> so you're seeing a, a lot of this debris from the storm back yes. in May, then yes. again with yes. barrel. Up again. Ditches are already blocked, and heavy rain could move these piles into the streets. So we need these trucks now because we don't know what's going what's gonna to happen. And you can see with the neighborhoods, a lot of, of our sewer are also full of uh, debris. So, yeah, that's. I think it's an emergency to empty the streets right now. Pooja Lodia, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. <laughs> what was once a home? I'm scared. I don't know if my home will hold up. Is now gutted under construction all over again. It's heartbreaking. It's, I mean, you had kids here, grandkids. Linda and Cameron Brown have lived here for more than 20 years. That is until two weeks ago today. This is where the tree was. Hurricane Barrel uprooted a 60 foot tree from their front yard and it came crashing down on their house. It's shocking to see your home like just 
almost gone. Linda says she got up from bed just moments before. I'm glad I got up and listened to him for the first time. Now forced to camp outside. Come on, let's go guys. With their pets. We have five dogs and they're under a lot of stress right now. Inside, years worth of memories destroyed. But most of the pictures are gone. And they're not alone. About 200,000 Texas households are getting help through FEMA, expected to receive more than $175 million in financial assistance to get back on their feet after the storm. For the Browns, it's just a waiting game. They're not sure what's next for their home. If they're going to even rebuild it or fix it, or right now they're just trying to stabilize it. And while most people are moving on, they have a message to share. Be kind to others. You don't know what they're going through. And be grateful because this is very devastating. The roar of the chainsaws and the hands of help clearing off the hurricane havoc left by barrel. Up to 60 trees lost with more than a dozen headstones damaged. This is a big, huge, monumental task for us. Margo Williams, she's part of the Descendants of Olivewood, the nonprofit organization that keeps the 150-year-old cemetery looking good. <laughs> This morning, volunteers from Chenier Energy out to help out, but federal assistance is not coming. Basically, FEMA has said that we don't qualify as a museum or really like a cultural site, and so they don't fund cemeteries. So for now, the cleanup is in the hands of Chenier and their volunteers, and people like Charles Cook, who's been mowing and edging in olive wood for more than 30 years. It's all about community, you know? And, and we only come this way one time, so try to leave it a little bit better than you found it. If you were to turn that camera that way, you can see our office building. So we're literally at the doorstep of where we work. These are our neighbors, so we want to give back to our neighbors. Olivewood, a piece of Houston history, a piece of Texas history, needs help, needs your help. This is a historical cultural site. The people that are buried here in Olivewood, they help weave the very fabric that is Houston, the very fabric that is Texas, the very fabric that is the United States of America. They tell the full American story.